Here's how the journey goes when it finally dawns on you after a good dose of some good mainstream science reading that you can't argue the Bible out intellectually within its own pages. Usually the first thing you do is latch on to more sophisticated voices and a handful of some good apologetics. This is because for the first time you're starting to grow to love the significance of evidence in intelligent discourse. And on the other hand you are starting to realize that it's immature to hold on to a certainty that doesn't square with the evidence. On your journey for more sophisticated uh, Christian voices, you stumble across the most obvious ones and those easy to find. These include voices like William Lane Craig, Frank Turek, John Lennox, Jordan Peterson, Robert Barron, etc. However, if you are joining this conversation quite recently, two voices will stand out to you most of all, and these are Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson. In your journey for a much more enlightened Christianity that has lost its foundation in fundamentalism and a literal understanding of scripture, you will be immediately fascinated by <clears throat> Peterson. But as you listen and read on, and depending on how much deep and honest you listen and read, you will slowly start gravitating towards Sam Harris. And then for some time, you will start thinking Jordan Peterson is communicating dishonestly. But the more you listen, this is after you have grown beyond believing things like talking snakes and donkeys, it will dawn on you again that the conversation is much, much bigger and deeper and longer than you thought. Then at that point you will grow beyond taking sides and simply start communicating as an intelligent participant in life's biggest story. When you reach that stage, no matter how deep you dive into your sophisticated philosophical Christian apologetics, there is no going back. And by going back, I mean you will never place your feet in literal scripture. Every intelligent argument you give will be attesting to that because it will be you flying over the text in countless ways that you won't always be proud to admit. And here's the catch. At that point, you are as good an atheist as Dawkins in the eyes of someone like the Apostle Paul, or your fundamentalist friend just seated right next to you.